Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You joined us last week as we made our way up from Cape Town, stopping over at Kimberley before making our way over the border into Botswana where we spent our first night at Puduhudu campsite just outside of Lubatsi. From there we made our way up to Kamarina Sanctuary where we spent a peaceful night and witnessed some amazing rhinos in the wild. So sit back and join us this week as we travel further up into Botswana. We had another early morning at Kama Rhino Sanctuary as we had a quick breakfast before pitching up camp and making our way out of the park. Pretty soon we had the camp pitched up and we were on our way towards the gate. We were all very excited to hit the road and make our way up to Kubu Island. On our way out we were greeted by one more zebra before we got to the gate and turned back onto the main road. As mentioned, we were making our way up to Kubu Island on the Mahadi Khadi Pans and we had about 240 kilometers of driving to do today with the last 50 odd kilometers being proper 4x4 tracks. On our way there, we stopped over at Lech Lakane where we filled the cars and the jerry cans and shopped for some last minute basic essentials. I was very excited as this would be my second visit to the Mahari Hari Pan. A lot of years back I had the privilege of uh, exploring the pans on the back of a quad bike and spending one magical night sleeping under the stars on the pan. But this will be the first time that I'll be visiting Kubu Island. Soon we were going through the last bit of civilization at Muachunu before we turned off the tar road and took the gravel road towards Kubu Island itself. From this point onwards you will need a 4x4 vehicle with quite decent ground clearance to make your way to Kubu Island. It wasn't long before we arrived at the lookout point where we stopped to deflate our tires, admire the view and take a few photos. From there we continued further along the tracks making our way to Kubu Island. From here the tracks really start to get more rocky, sandy and corrugated. It's definitely advisable to be more than one vehicle when you plan on visiting as it is quite remote and you can get stuck. There are a lot of tracks scattered in this area, but they all generally do lead in the same direction. But be sure to take a GPS with you to ensure that you don't get lost. We visited in the month of June, so it was the dry season and we didn't really have any issues on the tracks because they were nice and dry. However, in the rain season, especially after heavy rains, a lot of these parts are virtually inaccessible. And if you plan on visiting then, I would advise that you are extremely uh, experienced 4x4 driver that you know the area well and plan on getting stuck a few times because it's just a mud bath basically the whole time. After about an hour or so's driving we cleared the shrubbery and made our way onto the edge of the pan itself. 
it's really here we start getting that feeling of the remoteness and the emptiness of this area which is just absolutely epic Also, when driving on the pans themselves, please stick to the main tracks because if you wander off them, you are very likely to get stuck. The main tracks are quite hard and even if the pans look hard, it's just the surface. Underneath the surface, it can be incredibly soft mud and you can really get into a sticky situation. So try and stick towards the main tracks as much as you can. We had to help someone that wandered off the main track and got stuck and it took hours of digging and recovery and help from the rangers before we could eventually get him free again. But it truly is an awesome experience driving over the pans and experiencing the vastness and the emptiness that this place has to offer. On the pan area itself, there is a few signposts scattered around that will lead you to the camp area itself. We covered the last few kilometers on the pan until we made our way to the access gate to Kubu itself. At the office we quickly checked in before making our way to our campsite for the next two nights. We also bought some wood at the office before making our way to our campsite. It's about a kilometer or so's drive from the gate to the campsites themselves that are all nestled on the edge of the island itself, with some of them having some spectacular views over the pans. Best of all, now this is a really nice complex. This is a bit of but it's a funny fun. And it's a bit more spicy. The campsites at Kubu works on a first come first serve basis so we selected a nice big campsite overlooking the pans and got to setting up camp. Just note that Kubu Island is completely off grid and in essence is wild camping so you don't really have any amenities there. You don't have water or toilets or shower facilities. There are a few long drops scattered throughout the camp terrain but for the rest you have to be totally self-sufficient. For us this is absolutely perfect as this is what we are geared to and this is what we enjoy and the absolute peacefulness of this place is indescribable. This is really really an awesome place to visit. After we got the camp set up we started to relax and settle in and just started to appreciate this awesome environment that we found ourselves in. Kubu Island itself is situated on the Suapan and boasts some big baobab trees that you can find on the island and also some surreal sites of the pans. As the afternoon drew on we just took in more and more of what this place has to offer and as mentioned before we also had to go out and help an individual who got stuck on the pans so that did take up a lot of the time of our first day at Kubu Island. Back at camp the sun was starting to set and everyone slowly started migrating towards the fire to have a nice braai tonight and just enjoy each other's company. After a nice braai, it was time to turn in for the night. But at night time, this place comes alive in a totally different way. You just see millions upon millions upon millions of stars. It's incredible to behold. 
My photography skills can't do this justice, but if this is your thing, this is definitely the place to go. The next day everyone got up at their own pace as we had a nice day to relax at Kubu Island. We spent the day exploring the island, going looking at some of the giant baobab trees that you can find on the island or just walking on the pans. It was just a nice lazy day of exploring Kubu Island. Later the day I went out for one last walk on the pans. This truly is a special, special place. The emptiness, the vastness, it's it's really it's undescribable. If you if you're not there you can't tell people how it is there. It's truly a special place. We were treated to one more spectacular sunset before it was time to get the fire going and sit around for our last night on Kubu Island. We had a great time sitting next to the fire and just enjoying our last few moments in this amazing place. And after we had yet another amazing braai, it was time to turn in for the night. We had a nice early start to the morning as we pitched up camp and got back on the road. Today we are making our way up further north towards Nata Lodge. It's about a 130 kilometers drive, but the majority of the drive would be on Tweespur 4x4 tracks. This was absolutely awesome for me as these are the type of roads that I really enjoy driving and exploring. Some parts of the road did get a bit bad. Uh, towards the end the road was especially very corrugated so do be prepared for that also the bushes are quite tight to the road so you might get a few scratches here and there on your car but it is a great experience once again there are a lot of tracks scattered through the area but you should be fine as most of them should lead you up north towards the tar road however do take along a gps of tracks for africa and you shouldn't get lost we continued pushing on further, moving up further north towards the tar road while savouring every moment of this epic journey. Once again, as we were there in the dry season, the tracks weren't that bad. It's a bit corrugated in places and a bit sandy here and there or rocky here and there, but overall, not too bad. After a while of driving, we were on the final stretch of our 4x4 tracks. And it's in places it's great where the trees open up you can really see how you're driving up between the two pans making your way up north really it was a great drive for me something i really enjoyed this holiday as you got closer and closer to the tar road again you could see small signs of civilization popping up around you again and it wasn't too long before we reached the tar road But before we got onto the main road again, we just had a quick stop to inflate our tires. From there it was a 30 km drive on a tar road towards Nata, where you can fill up with diesel if you need to, or stock up on the basic food supplies if you need that. However, we pushed through towards Nata Lodge, which is just situated just a few kilometers outside of Nata.
And it wasn't long before we reached the turn off to Nata Lodge itself where we turned off the main road and made our way towards reception. Upon arriving at the reception area we quickly checked in for our night's stay before we had a quick lunch at the restaurant. The lodge itself is very neat and tidy with a nice pool area and a bar and restaurant area where you can have a lunch or just catch up on what's going on back home. We will do a full review on this campsite, be sure to keep an eye out on the channel for that. But of course we were here to camp the night and after lunch we got back in the cars and made our way over to the campsites. The campsites are situated a few hundred meters from reception and they are all nestled in between trees to ensure that you've got good shade throughout the day. You do camp on a sandy terrain but it really is a nice vibe in the camp. And it wasn't long before we were all pitched up and settled in and enjoyed a hot shower for the first time in a few days. Some of us still had to clean out a bit of Kubu's dust from the back of their buckies. But pretty soon we were all settled down and relaxing while enjoying a breathtaking sunset. And as always, just as the sun set, we got the fire going and we're all settled in around it, enjoying each other's conversation before having a nice braai and settling in for the night. We had a nice relaxing start to our morning as we didn't have to drive that far today and it's all tar roads so we decided to lie in a bit before we made our way up to Kasani. As we exited the camp we turned right onto the main road and pointed the car's nose in the direction of Kasani. We had about 315 kilometers to travel today, all of which would be on tar roads and our destination tonight would be Tebe River Safari Lodge in Kasani. We've driven this road quite a few times in our life and we've always seen elephants either next to the road or crossing the road and this time we weren't disappointed as well. We actually saw quite a few elephants next to the road and other game as well so be vigilant when you drive this road and expect that you might see some game either next to the road or crossing the road. We pushed on further and soon we were in the town of Gazankula where we turned left and made our way to Kasane. If you continue straight on this road you would reach the Gazankula border post where you would cross over into Zambia. It used to be a ferry but uh, they've completed the bridge a few years ago. It wasn't long before we were in the town of Kasani and turning off the main road and making our way towards Tebe River Safari Lodge. From the turn off we just followed the road through the gate and made our way to the reception area where we checked in for our stay. We'll be staying three nights at this lodge. At the reception you will also find a Wi-Fi hotspot so that you can connect to the internet 
and from here you can also book day excursions such as trips to Chobe National Park or boat cruises on the river or trips to the Victoria Falls or if you want to add in your laundry you can also do it here. We made our way from the reception to our campsite that we'll be staying on for the next three nights. The campsite we got was one of the bigger campsites there. We could fit four cars and three camping trailers on this site, but anything more than that will be a bit of a squeeze. We got our camp pitched up and then we had the rest of the afternoon to ourselves. Some of us stayed at the camp and relaxed while others went to town to stock up on essentials. We decided to go to the Chobe Safari Lodge to go have lunch there. It's always a beautiful lodge to go. We were quite shocked to see that they were actually under construction at the moment but we could still have a sundowner and a pub lunch at the bar that they put up next to the river. And of course later that night we got the fires going and we sat around it and relaxed and had a nice braai before turning in for the night. We were up early the next morning as we were making our way into the Chobe National Park via the Sududu Gate and we couldn't believe our luck. We probably haven't even driven a hundred meters or so and we saw this lioness sitting right next to the road stalking an impala. She did have a charge at him but unfortunately the cars got in the way and she left disappointed. After that incredible sighting we continued to drive through the park seeing some more game including kudus and buffaloes and hippos and we even had a laugh at the cheeky baboons playing around and even one falling out of a tree. And we did drive the whole morning through the park in search of our game. We went down to the beach road next to the water, but it was quite quiet then. We didn't really see anything there in the morning. And we decided to take the road up uh, to the smaller roads, more towards the tar road side in the park. And we were really unlucky. We didn't see a lot in the morning that side. We knew the elephants were close because one had pushed a tree over into the road just before us and we had to get out to move the tree out of the road but we couldn't find them at that moment. After we got the tree out of the road we could continue on with our game drive and it wasn't long before we found the elephant. This was actually quite strange to us that we drove around the whole morning and only saw the one elephant because usually you do see quite a lot of elephants in the Chobe. As it was starting to approach lunchtime, we drove back uh, on the beach road again, making our way back to the gate. After we were done with our game drive, we headed over to a coffee shop in Kasani, where we had a nice lunch. I took a stroll down towards the jetty and from there, you really had an amazing view of the Chobe River in all its glory. From there we drove out to the newly built Gazankula Bridge at the border post and reminisced about all the old days when we used to cross on the ferry. Later in the afternoon we went for another game drive through the park and this time it didn't take us long to find all the elephants. On this afternoon drive, we truly did see a lot of elephants. We 
we made our way down to the river to the beach drive and when we got there we saw even more elephants down at the river it was incredible to see these majestic creatures are really something to behold we spent the rest of the afternoon just sitting next to the river and looking at all the animals coming down to drink and of course all the elephants and hippos lounging around Soon the sun was starting to set and we made our way back to the gate and back to camp where we got the fires going and sat around and talked about all the sightings we saw today before calling it a night and going to bed. Join us next week as we spend our last few days in the Chobe and this time exploring the Chobe from the river itself before making our way over the border into Namibia where we're spending a few nights in the Kapribi, first of two nights at Camp Kwandu, next to the Kwandu River and then finally making our way to Ngepi where we just have a nice relaxing time.